saya yakin Anda mesti melihat perbedaan bahwa latar belakang video saya sekarang saat ini berbeda dengan latar belakang video saya sebelumnya. Some of you may have known the name of this bridge. Well, that's right. The name of this bridge is Suramadu National Bridge located in Surabaya. Namanya adalah Jembatan Suramadu yang terletak di Surabaya. And this bridge connects between Java Island and Madura Island. Jembatan inilah yang menghubungkan antara Pulau Jawa dan Pulau Madura. Located in East Java, Indonesia. Perhaps you have a question. What's the relation between the background of the video and the topic we'll discuss? Barangkali ada pertanyaan, apa sih hubungannya antara video, latar belakang video ini dengan topik lain? Of course there is a relation. Tentu saja ada hubungannya. And I will use this bridge in some sentences concerning the topic. Dan saya akan gunakan jembatan ini dalam beberapa kalimat yang berkaitan dengan topik kita kali ini. Before we begin our main discussion, I would like to review the previous part of participles. Jadi sebelum saya mulai pada topik utama kita kali ini, I would like to review, saya akan mengulas kembali pertem, uh, bagian sebelumnya tentang participle. Well, um, In the previous part of uh, participle, we have discussed participle as adjectives. Kita sudah membahas tentang participle yang berfungsi sebagai kata sifat. For example, now, um, you know the participle here is not, um, the position is not a sentence, and but it is only a noun phrase. For example, ah, okay, please look. Running motorcycles. Actually, running motorcycles is not sentence, but only noun phrase. In a sentence, it will be I see running motorcycles. That's a sentence. Uh, that's uh, an example of active participle or present participle. Now, what about um, past participle? Past participle or passive participle. Um, for example, break, broke, broken. Yeah, for free, broke, break, broke, broken. Broken computer. Broken computer. A broken computer is not a sentence, but only noun phrase. And broke. The position of broken here is adjective. In a sentence, it will be I sold. A broken mod computers. Yeah, I sold a broken computer. That's a sentence. Well, that's the review of the previous part. And now let's go to another part of participle. Do you want to know? Please check it out. Now let's begin our discussion to talk about participle in the second part. Mari kita mulai diskusi kita untuk bicara participle bagian kedua. As I have mentioned before, the participle is divided into two. Seperti yang saya ungkapkan sebelumnya, bahwa participle dibagi menjadi dua. First is active or present participle using verb ing. Participle berbentuk aktif yang menggunakan kata kerja berbentuk ing. And the second one is passive or past participle using verb free. Participle berbentuk pasif menggunakan kata kerja bentuk ketiga. In the previous part, we have also discussed participle focusing on adjectives. But now, we discuss participle focusing on adverb. Jadi sebelumnya kita fokusnya adalah kata participle bentuk kata sifat, sebagai kata sifat, dan sekarang sebagai kata keterangan. There are three functions of participle we'd like to discuss now. First, It is um, two actions in the same time, dua kegiatan di kejadian yang sama, cause and effect, sebab akibat, and an action happening before another action. 
di kejadian yang terjadi sebelum kejadian yang lain. Now let's begin our discussion. Um, active or present participle for two actions in the same time. Please look at the example. When he was walking down the street, he met his old friend. Um, this sentence uses past continuous tense. Actually, we can also use participle form. Jadi, dan kalimat ini menggunakan past continuous tense dan kita bisa menggunakannya juga dalam bentuk participle by deleting when he was. So we only need walking down the street, walking di depan sendiri. And the sentence becomes walking down the street he met his old friend. Both of the, the sentences have the same meaning. Jadi kedua kalimat tersebut mempunyai arti yang sama. Now Um, about cause and effect tentang sebab akibat please look at the example because he got up late he missed the train karena dia bangun kesiangan dia terlambat atau ketinggalan kereta we can also use participle form by deleting because he and got here becomes get up jadi kita bisa mengubahnya dengan menghilangkan because of and gotnya menjadi popping get getting up. And the sentence becomes getting up late he missed the train. Now active or present participle for an action happening before another action. Please look at the example. After the students had finished their assignments, they submitted the assignments to their teacher. Setelah para siswa menyelesaikan tugasnya, mereka mengumpulkan tugasnya kepada gurunya. The sentence uses past perfect tense. Kalimat ini menggunakan past perfect tense. And for participle form, we only need had becomes having. So the sentence becomes having finished their assignments. The students submitted the assignments to their teacher. Now let's talk about passive or past participle. It is difficult to find two actions in the same time, but we can find easily for cause and effect. For example, because the school was damaged by the flood, The school had to be rebuilt. Karena sekolah dirusak oleh banjir, sekolah tersebut harus dibangun ulang. And in the participle form, we only need verb free damage. So the sentence will be... Yeah. Kita menggunakan kata kerja bentuk ketiga saja di depan. So the sentence become damaged by the flood. The school had to be rebuilt. Karena dirusak oleh banjir, sekolah tersebut harus dibangun kembali. Next. An action happening before another action. Please look at the example. After the patient had been given the prescription by the doctor, he went to the drugstore. Setelah pasien diberi resep oleh dokter, dia pergi ke toko obat. In the participle form, uh, we only need a had becomes having. So, the sentence will be having been given this prescription. Okay, I repeat. Having been given the prescription by the doctor, he went to the drugstore. Again, having been given the prescription by the doctor, the patient went to the drugstore. Setelah diberi resep oleh dokter, pasien tersebut pergi ke dokter. And he here will be... Um, is substituted by the word patient. Next, 
um, there's a question. Blah 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 with the length of five um, thousand four hundred and thirty-eight meters, Suramadu National Bridge becomes the longest bridge in Indonesia. Please pay attention to the options. A. Building. B. Build. C. B. Build. And D. The bridge. The bridge built. To answer the questions, please um, pay attention to the keyword. Suramadu Bridge here becomes the keyword. And the questions, I have the question, which one is correct? Suramadu Bridge is built or built something. Suramadu itu dibangun atau membangun. Of course, the answer will be Suramadu Bridge is built. Suramadu itu dibangun. So, it needs passive form or verb free. Too late in the complete sentence because Suramadu Bridge is built with the length 5,400 meters and so on, or built with the length of 5,400 meters. From my explanation, of course, we only need verb 3, karena dibangun. I'm sure you've gotten the answer. And have you known the answer? Okay, that's correct. The answer is B, will. Next question. Having delivered a package, blah, blah, blah. Please look at the options. For A, the other packages were, and B, the other packages are, C, Susan delivered, D, the other houses were. And having delivered the package here means someone had delivered the package. Jadi, having delivered the package itu artinya adalah seseorang telah mengirimkan. Who delivered the package? Siapa yang mengirim? Of course, Susan. Yeah, Susan had delivered the package. So, from the um, from my, the explanation here, I'm sure you have known the answer, and the answer is C. Susan delivered the other packages to other houses. Well, that's all my explanation. I hope you could understand. Thanks for your attention and thanks for your watching. And don't forget. Yeah.